Screen Savers. I'm Kate Fatella. And I'm Leo Laporta. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up in today's show, how'd you like to uh, skip the Photoshop entirely and take your negatives and reproduce them all by yourself? Woohoo! It's called a reproduction without any help. Something I'm very Is that good like at. Anaerobic? We'll show you. Oh no, that's yes. something else. We'll show you what to do when you uh, need to create copies at home. All right. Also, we're going to have a publication that's been in print for over 150 years, worthy of our Geek Library. Find out what you should be adding to your collection. Yes, we'll blow the dust off and show you. Then later, advanced uh, advancement with the uh, new hybrids and concept DVD players from the Consumer Electronics Show. These are wacky, wacky. Wacky. Are they attractive? Awesome. They're attractive. All right. On uh, today's, yeah, when they say concept, that's kind of, that's basically what concept is code for. We're never going to sell these, but they really look cool. It's the fashion PC. Yeah. Arr. Yeah, there was one that looked like a toilet at a See that with the leopard? Oh, that's neat. And the lid went on. Anyway. I'm today. really inspired. <laughs> I don't want it. It's on today's Fresh, Fresh Gear. Now, before we talk about today's topic in the chat room, let's have results from uh, our last poll. The question was, should you be able to crack your own software? Should cracking software that you own be illegal. Uh, yes was no, and the no was yes. Right. So well, y'all agree with us, the bulk of you. That. 85% of you. You can crack your own dang software. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, today in the chat room, this is very interesting. A new development. In fact, I can show you the website at Autonova.com. Anna Nova, there she is now, the green-haired Pat Benatar-looking kind of punky girl. She's going to be the world's first virtual news oh, anchor. Oh, no. Who's going to do this? What network is going to do this? That's a good question. I, I don't know if they've Britain, even had it. It's, it is in Britain. I don't know if it's actually been picked up by the BBC, but it's meant to sit on your desktop. She doesn't actually think on her own. She has a personality. I haven't figured out how they're going to do that because really what she does is downloads feeds from the news wires and then translates she synthesizes text it. to speech. And she synthesizes The thing it. I like is she's been programmed as 28 years old, 5 foot 8 inches tall with pleasant, quietly intelligent manner that makes people feel relaxed when they engage with her. And how Just like Kate. Thank you very much. She's a little taller than you. She's significantly taller than me. <laughs> so but our question is... Would you believe a virtual news anchor? Now, That's here's, an interesting question. It really. is an interesting question. The thing is, she's not actually delivering the news. She's getting it from the news wires and rattling it back. Well, you think that's any different from Tom Brokaw? Right. So I mean, he's just reading the news and rattling it back. Right. So I personally would believe a virtual news anchor. Sure. It's the same as any other anchor, right? Would you download one? I might download. I don't know. You know, I mean, it depends. I guess some of it depends on how good the synthesis is and how realistic she looks. Because the truth is, yeah, at least with that, you know, there's she doesn't have any biases. She's just, re, you know, no twitching eyebrow going. Yeah. Uh -huh. And today in the news. Right. Well. You know, I kind of, I don't know. Well, you know, we do actually. The person really we should ask, who's the expert in all of this? Absolutely. Is, is Tilda? Because she's probably. I mean, she probably applied for the job. Oh, I. Do you think? I don't know. I don't see Tilda as a newsy kind of gal. I don't know. But let's ask her and see what she thinks. Tilda, what do you think? Hey guys, hey Kate, hello Leo. Now, as far as Anna Nova is concerned, I think it's great. I mean, any time another virtual compatriot can actually make a splash, it's a good day in my book. The only big question is, do people want to hear their news reported by a virtual Spice Girl? <laughs> Who knows? Only time will tell. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Adios. I think yeah. I think she was auditioning. Only time will tell. That's a classic news scene. I think she likes you. Did you hear the way she said your name? She did say my name. Hello, Leo. She gave me that little something special. Tilda likes you. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Yeah. But that's really Get the question. Get in line, Tilda. I got virtual characters all over the world after me. Is, do you want, I tell you what, for the rest of the show, <laughs> I'm going to call you Liu. So, Liu, you can see what we think we want to know, what you think. Take our web poll at thescreensavers.com. And, of course, while you're there, click on the talkback feature. Tell us, would you sit in front of your desk to watch an anchor read the news to you anyway, regardless of who it is? I like to read my own news. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's me. Although, you know, I do books on tape. I like having people read to me. But in front of your computer? Do you want to watch yeah, someone maybe in the read car, to you? In front of, and maybe in the car, maybe but in the she car? Wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to see the oh, beautiful Pat Benatar. Oh, I hear her lovely 28-year-old, 5 foot voice. making people feel comfortable Engaged. around her. You can also phone us, 888-989-7879, or chat with us at chat.ZDNet.com, where you will, in fact, be a virtual character in the screensavers room. Unless, of course, you've got a net cam, you want to be on television, then you click on the net cam Cineplex because Shannon and Roger, hello. I mean, virtual beauty in and of themselves, these are real newscasters.
So uh, virtual newscasting, we don't know. They're just talking to their imaginary friend that's sitting between them, so we don't want to interrupt. But of course, call Shannon and Roger and uh, earn yourself yeah, a... They're talking, they're talking to, each to each other. Their something, imaginary right? friend yeah. standing right here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, earn yourself the fabulous magnet as seen on our fridge, soon to be seen on yours. There's Josh, one of our engineers. Oh, huge. yeah. Oh. Thank you. All right. Tammy, Tommy. <laughs> Oh, I see. Very beautiful. Tommy and Brandon join us uh, on the phone from Midland, uh, Michigan. Hello, Brandon and Tommy. Hi, Brandon and Tommy. Hello. Okay. Hello. How are you? You know what, you guys? You have to address Leo for this whole show. You have to call him Leo. Leo. Hi, Leo. Leo. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's very virtual of you. I like it. So what can we do for you uh, to... Okay, well, we're building a lab in our basement. Oh, wow. Cool. What kind of lab? Uh, well, it's just going to have a bunch of Linux machines. You can blow stuff up? You're gonna uh, no. like no. like rejuvenate the undead. Uh, I saw maybe. weird science. You could probably you know make a, a chick out of a, a Barbie doll. You could make <laughs> Kelly LeBron. You could make Kelly LeBron. I don't think I have any idea what we're talking no. about. So what uh, are no. you gonna do? You said Linux servers down there. Uh yeah, but we want to have a big a big screen monitor, but we can't afford a glass uh, a gas plasma what? monitor. It's only a like thousand dollars. A thousand? I mean ten thousand. Did I say eight thousand? <laughs> like eight thousand. Yeah. yeah. A little order of magnitude problem. You know, it's That's a mere all. Eight thousand yeah. bucks. So you want something that big? Yeah, we were wondering if a projector would do it. Yeah, oh, certainly. We've done that. In fact, we had a projector here. We were showing movies on the wall. In oh, fact, yeah. you can get it bigger than that. It'll fill the whole wall. Problem with a projector is, like any projector, you have to turn the lights down. Yeah. Now it's the basement. Maybe you don't care. They like to work in the dark in their Linux lab. I got another suggestion for you that's kind of midway between that and a CRT. There's a new uh, category of monitors I like a lot called LCD projectors. Mm -hmm. And what they're actually fairly cheap because what they're doing, you've seen projection screen televisions, right. right? What they're doing is they're actually taking a fairly small LCD screen. It doesn't have to be that big, so it's cheap to make, and projecting it. But the whole thing is not very deep. It's only about, you know, maybe yay, maybe even a little less, yay deep. Hmm. They, they were we're all over the show floor comics, and I think they're much more reasonable. Uh, now, a good projector, like a Proxima, is going to set you back three or four thousand dollars. Those are expensive. I think the LCD projector monitors are considerably cheaper, and they look good. They're brighter. You can actually use them with lights on. I really like them. They are basically this size. They're basically the plasma screen size. They look very much like a plasma screen, but they don't. But they're cheaper. They also don't have the power consumption. This thing, if you go up to this, let me just go up to this for a second. I can just warm myself. <laughs> He's just basking off of this in thing. the glow. Of the gas gas hundreds gas. of watts uh, of power dissipation um, to generate these plasma screen monitors. Plus, you know what? Up close, they're a little, they're a little fun. We don't we like, like them that them much. Up close, yeah. No. They're better if you're going to be far away. So look sure. look at the LCG projectors. Um, they are out. I don't know what the prices are. I think it's three or three, around two or three thousand. But I will, I will check with you. And then the new generation mm -hmm. is supposedly very, very good. Um, we were talking to uh, uh, Alfred Poor about that. Remember, he's a display expert, and he says he thinks this might be the, cat the category. Really? Yeah, he really likes these. I just want the one that beams on my glasses. That was cool. That's too. what I want. Yeah. But you know. So, I guess, you know, short term, that's your, your choice. But you could certainly use a projector. They hook up to the back of the computer just like a regular monitor does. You project it on a wall. But it'll still um, cost a couple thousand? Well, a good one does. You can get them for less than that. I mean, uh, you might even be able to get one used uh, for less than that uh, from some, some business guy who wants to upgrade and, you know, wants to unload his old Proxima. Hey. Is a Linux machine going to be able to deal with that monitor? Absolutely, because okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't look like anything else to it. It just thinks it's a regular monitor. Good. You won't be able to find the description, of course, when you're setting up Linux, but you'll just choose a standard 1024 by 768 monitor, and it'll look fine. All right. Okay. Uh, yep. Can we each have an autograph picture? Sure. Of course. And we'll, uh, we'll sign it to the geeks in the lab or something like that. <laughs> okay. So what are you going to do in this lab? Uh, we're going to program and goof off. That's great. Oh, man. Man, the times have changed. You know what? I always wanted a place in the basement with like a Barca lounger and a TV set and maybe a ping pong or you a pinball a game. You kind of I guy. want a rec room. This is the rec room of the, of the new millennium. Well, then there you go. I love it. I want a dance Thanks, studio. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Brandon. Husband. Bye, guys. Yep. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, dance studio. Oh, yeah. yeah. After the break, rediscover the essence of geek with Scientific American when the screensavers continue. A must for your lab. <laughs> It's time once again for Kate and Leo's Geek Library. Got to know. When we're where and we recommend for your uh, geek pleasure one of our all time favorites. It could be a book, bookmark, could be a movie. Software. I, I don't know. You did a magazine once. You did Mondo 2000. I did. Now it's my turn to do a magazine. Okay, all cool. Right? Let's see what you what got. You, now, what do you think? I want to ask people to guess. 150 years old. 
classic. The Geek Library. I'll tell you what. My subscription's lapsed. You know what my guess would be? What? National Geographic. Close. But I'm wrong. It's not geeky enough. It's so good. Oh, you know, did you know that dog? there's a dog that watches this show, or a family with a dog, and every time we squeak the fridge open, he jumps up and barks insanely. So okay, get ready. Now. Get ready. The dog's going to bark. <laughs> Weird, huh? I love that. We don't, we don't even need a door. We just My do magazine it. isn't... What is the magazine? publication anymore, so hopefully yours is. Scientific American. All right. Now, there are a lot of science magazines out there, and there's some really wonderful ones, Nature, Discovery uh, Magazine, uh, Popular Science. But I think of the bunch, this is the best. And because of some of the long-running features, now, they really, it's funny, since I, I by the way, i got to resubscribe. It's, it, this was so much fun to go down memory lane with this one. I stopped subscribing because there was so much stuff to read, and I never could get through it all. You read computer stuff. Yeah, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of computer technology information in here. Here. And the features that I've always liked are still here. For instance, and one of my favorites is they look at Scientific American from 50, 100, and 150 years oh, ago. Wow. So it's really fun to think what, to read what scientists were talking about in 1849. I mean, just imagine. Oh my goodness. Uh, or you know, in 1949 or 19, 1899. It's just really a lot of fun. Wow. Uh, so that's one of the things I like. Now, if you're into math, Martin Gardner for years wrote the incredible mathematical recreations. Now Ian Stewart uh, is doing it, but it's still a lot of fun. Many great computer programs were first talked about in this column. For instance, Life, you've probably all seen the game of Life, uh, was originally talked about in this column. A lot of neat stuff in here. Uh, in fact, one of my earliest programming exercises hmm. were inspired by Martin Gardner's uh, mathematical recreations. Really? And there's a new feature in the back that everybody seems to like a lot. This is called Working Knowledge, and it's how things work. This is how water filters work. Oh, cool. I'll, we'll take another one if I, uh, if I go. Uh, to the January 2000, the current uh, issue. This is how instant film, you know, Polaroid style film works. Oh, that's very cool. This is the kind of thing, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I love this kind of sure. stuff. Sure. And I love reading about, you know, the, our species had at le least 15 cousins, only one remains us. Why did the other ones uh, go? Snowball Earth, the startling theory of our, theory of our uh, planet's frozen path. Negative energy and warp drive. Maglev trains. That's just one issue. Oh, so it sounds like it's, a geek it, paradise. It is geek paradise. And like I said, the only problem is I was feeling guilty guilty because I would get this every month and, and I couldn't manage to get through it. But see, you saved it and for years now you can still them. go back and learn something. It's a library of science and scientific thought and as, as they show it, you know, if you go back in time, it's really fun to see what people used to think. You can also, you don't have to subscribe if you want to look at the website. Much of the issue, much of the, uh, issue is in the website. You click on the current issue, you'll see that working knowledge is there on the web. Here's one on a catalytic converter. So you can see, get a lot of this on the website and I highly recommend you do it. They also have have original material that's on the web only exactly. and not in the magazine. And many of their columns. I'm glad that they put it online because that really makes it more accessible. So whether it's online or uh, in the newsstand, I highly recommend your geek library include Scientific American. Right. Couldn't forget that one. Did you write us a review? No. You didn't? No. Oh, well. Maybe Roger did. Oh, Tom, Tom and Roger, Roger wrote one, you know, so check it out. They didn't even, I forgot. They didn't even ask. Normally I do. Oops. You can read the review and uh, all of our Geek Library recommendations at thescreensavers.com. All right. Coming up next, we're going to take more uh, of your calls, answer more of your questions when the Screen Savers continues. Don't go away. And I've got to find out where that missing is. That is. ScreenSavers.com, best place for more information. If you need help with your computer, you know, you can always turn to what we'd like to call the third geek, the ScreenSavers message boards, a place to find answers and provide answers. It's all at ScreenSavers.com. Geek number one and geek number two here answering your questions. Our next caller, Jamie on the phone from, oh my, Pontotoc, 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 from Mississippi. From Mississippi. Are you there, Jamie? Oh, we don't have them there yet. yet. So meanwhile, Jamie was going to ask about APEC, which is something that he says is needed or required in his dual processor 
motherboard. And I'm not finding it. Now, I'm going to take a guess because right. I think I've seen this in specifications. I'm going to search while you guess. Some MOBOs, not all, not mine, the BP6, if you're not using both processors, you'll have to put basically what is a terminator in the second slot okay. to occupy the space and I guess to tell the motherboard not to be looking at this. Don't be looking over here. There's no processor over here. I'm thinking that's what it is. Jamie, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, All right. Jamie. Now, so, what is it you want to know about? Oh, God, this is amazing. I'm actually on. Amaze yourself. Congratulations. Whoa. <laughs> What's up? So okay. tell, me, tell me your life story, Jamie, in about 30 seconds. Well, I have a Windows 2000 machine. Yay. Mm -hmm. And I have a dual processor board. Awesome, isn't it? Yeah, but well, you only have one. Pro get it working. Let me guess. You only have one processor. Yes, and it's a Celeron, and it's a slot one board. Okay. All right. Now, I was told I had to have an APEC module to run it. Is that for the? Oh, I see. And to run it as dual processor. Yes. APIC or APEC? I think it's APIC. Or and is it for the second know? slot or for the main slot? Is it for the? Is it something that the process? Is it an adapter for the Celeron? It, it, it's something to make the board compatible with both processors. Uh, huh? Both to make the board run with both processors. Both Celerons. Yes. All right, yeah. Okay. The one thing about the Celeron, okay, now I'm okay, now I'm understanding what Are you this getting is. this? So I I was guessing before we talked to you that you were talking about the terminator that some motherboards require if you don't have two processors in there. Now what I'm gathering is it's an adapter. It's a socket style adapter. The Celeron's not designed for dual processing. You know that, right? Yes, I was it, And it's disabled. There's a pin that's that, a pin that's blocking dual ah. processing. And that's it's not that it can't do it. It's that uh, Intel doesn't want people to start buying the Celeron when they should be buying the more uh, more expensive for dual processing. Yes. Should because Intel makes more money. Right. I'm running a dual processor motherboard, the a Abit BP6, which uses the socketed, the socket 370 Celerons, and it was a huge breakthrough motherboard because it was a dual processor motherboard designed for Celerons, and of course what they've done is they've wired the socket differently. Now, if you're going to use a standard multiprocessor motherboard, you're going to need something that in effect rewires the Celeron so that the disabling technology um, is overridden well, and that you can run multiple processes. I'm that? using an 8-bit P2 2200. Okay. Okay. And it's a P2 motherboard, and that's the whole point, is it's designed for Pentium 2s. Yes. Um, you know where I would go, and I know they will know the answer to this. They might even sell them as Cantec, which is where okay, I got yeah. my BP6. They kind of, they're an overclocking uh, uh, dealer, right? C-A-N-T-E-K dot com. And I bet you they sell them. If they don't, I'll tell you what, we will find somewhere that sells them for you okay. and where to get them. Um, it's, I, I'm going to guess it's pretty much like a Slocket. A Slocket is an adapter that allows you to use a Socket 370 processor in a slot. Right. Okay. And uh, I would guess that it's basically a Slocket. It'll be in here somewhere in the tech facts or tech discussion on how to run multiprocessors. In, in fact, they probably use them because they sell a lot of multiprocessor systems. Hmm. So I would just uh, try this. I'll tell you what we will look. Somebody will call in and say, here's where you get them. We're looking for, is it APEC or APIC? APIC. Okay, searching We're that. looking for an APIC, uh, where to get one, how much they cost, and it's for a Pentium 2 slot. And you have a, so you have a socketed uh, uh, Celeron for that? No, you, have a, you have a slot, slot one Celeron, yeah, right. so it's something probably that would go, and that's important because, of course, the slockets are designed for socketed Celeron, so it's something that would kind of go in between the Celeron hmm. and the socket. Okay. And all it would do is rewire it. I, I'll tell you what, I do have a website I can refer you to that shows you what the wiring difference is, and we'll find it. We'll find a source for Apex for you. All it's right. worth doing because Windows 2000... Oh, it's amazing. I love it. I love it. And with Except two, for Mac Warrior 3, don't run on it, man. It's well, that, that, yeah. and that's some problem with some some games. And, and you know what? what what's going to happen? I think is is the game companies going to say, wait a minute. A lot of a lot of consumers are buying Windows 2000. We're going to make sure that our games work with Windows 2000. Once consumers do buy it, all the new stuff that. works with it. I'm having trouble in my case with my video card in Windows 2000. Both Unreal Tournament and Quake 3 will want, run, but only run in Windows mode, I, windowed mode. I can't get them to run full screen. Huh. My Banshee run wonderful. Yeah. So, good, you know what? It's, it's, just, it's just a question of getting the, the right driver combination. Of course, we're still using a beta release of Windows 2000. It's not out until... Yeah, I got beta 3. Yeah. It, the, the gold is out February 17th. It will ship. 
Uh, at that time, we're going to be doing a lot of coverage with it. We'll I think it. it's probably the operating system of choice. Certainly for people with dual processor systems, lots of RAM, it runs like a champ. Man. Yeah, that's Only perfect. Jamie, you've got the perfect <laughs> system right. for it. Hey, Jamie, I'm so glad you called. Can I get a picture? Yes, of we'll course. get it to you. Hang on the line. We're going to get your address. And we will get in the show notes or before the show's over all the details of where to get one of these APICs for you. Okay? Wonderful. Thank okay. You. Thanks, Jamie. Hey, folks, stay here. Don't start flipping. Not only APICs. No, still, the, there's more. Oh, there's more. Still to Don't come on this in. very show. How to find out how you can make copies of your negatives using a film scanner. Okay. Also, more answers to your toughest computer questions. And hybrid DVD players that complete your entertainment system and your life. All that and more as the screensavers rule. Hey, welcome back to the Screen Savers. I am Leo Laporte. Yeah, I wish uh, you were Leo Laporte right about now. Uh, I'm actually Leo Laporte. That's Kate Patello. Okay, thank fine. you for joining. Oh, fine. Real quickly, I completely got the APIC thing wrong. Uh, you do need an adapter. APIC. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, is Intel's proprietary standard for SMP. You, oh. So, Jamie, first thing you're going to do is you're going to look in your BIOS and make sure that it's turned on. Okay, the next thing, we're still gonna, you're still going to need those adapters. We'll find you those adapters. I know a lot of people are going, boy, that was completely wrong. What are you talking about there? So, <laughs> so I before got, you I got send the email, Off don't the send top it. of my head, that's what happens with live TV. I got it wrong. We'll get it right now. We'll solve it, and we'll talk about it in the show notes afterwards. Okay. But it is Intel's standard for symmetric multiprocessing. Hmm. So, SMP. Yeah, and obviously, if you have a dual processor motherboard, it supports it, or it wouldn't work. Well, I hope. With Intel chips. Okay. Now, let's move on to the chat topic. Yes. Today, we're talking about whether you'd believe a virtual news anchor. Due to Anna Nova, the new British soon-to-be-coming virtual news anchor who looks very much like Pat Benatar, will sit on your desktop and apparently, while making you feel comfortable to be around her with her sassy, clever, gentle, gentle personality, will read you the news. Although, we're kind of wondering how she's going to be sassy and gentle and wise when she's actually oh, just a bot, basically. It's all in the software. It's all a text-to-speech converter. We, we program sassy. That's that. Well, they push that button I right there. I think that sassy. must be all in vocal tone and mannerisms yeah. and all that kind of stuff in the way that she reads the news. Because, I mean, she can't, you know what she can't do? She can't do what our girl Tilda does. You know, our girl Tilda. I don't think they would allow that on family television. Oh, really? You know, you know what the difference is, don't you? What? Tilda's got soul, baby. Oh, soul. And she doesn't just, you know, rattle off That's whatever. That's what she's got. Tilda's got soul. Her well, nice she, soul. She actually has. In Lovely fact. soul. <laughs> Take our web poll, thescreensavers.com. While you're there, click on Talk Back. Tell us how you really feel. Well, all the guys love it. Let me change soul. the subject, please, please change. The you can subject. chat with us at chat.ZDNet.com. Com as well. Brandon joins us on the ZDTV 3Com Netcam Network from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Hey, you guys. How are you today? We're, We're great. great. How are you? Thank you. Wow, Pretty it's good. Brandon Except day. Except for my vapor lock on the brain here. Hey, with the hey Brandon's in the chat room. Two Brandons on uh, TV. What more could you want? What was it that made Brandon so popular about, eight, what, you're 18, 19, 20? Brandon Tartikoff. Brandon yeah, you're all named after Brandon Tartik. No, that can't No, they're be. all named after Brandon on 90210. No, they're too young for that, too. My wife's named Jennifer, small. and that was after the Love Story. Everybody in, you know, in the, that was born in that era. My mother's name is Jennifer, too. What do you know? Love Story. Jenny Lynn. But what was, was Brandon? What was that? Was that a, well, anyway, there was a Brandon fad about... Couple, 20, couple of decades ago. Okay, Brandon. In the 80s, Brandon <laughs> And since we're like totally into the content and everything, I'm going to toss you a magnet now, okay? Yeah. All right. Catch. One, two. Uh, oh, all right. I think we just whacked him in the forehead with that one. So, Brandon, what can we do for you? Well, I got a question for you. I got a Palm 3. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, is it possible to sync my Palm 3's email through to my Hotmail email downloaded through Alpha Express 5? Yes. Could be, yeah. I mean, that's actually the, the way, the workaround. You'd have to kludge it a little bit because you'd have to sync with Outlook and then set up Outlook yeah, to you download check your the, Hotmail. You download the Outlook. Let's take a look. Let me show you something. Can you sync? Let me ask you a question though, real quickly. Can you sync with Outlook Express 5 now? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. uh, I can sync to it if it's in, like, my regular email inbox, but to, like, my Hotmail inbox, it doesn't sync. But, see, you can set up your Hotmail account on Outlook. You yeah, just I have to... my Hotmail account set up on Alpha. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, just right. filter your Hotmail mail to your inbox. Yeah. Just have it go to the inbox. Oh, it makes its own folders, doesn't it? Wait a minute. Yeah, it does. It makes its own can folders. Can you specify which ones? I would guess if you made a filter that said mail that comes in through this account, filter it I, to... No, I, I, I tried that. You can't set up filters through uh, Hotmail. So the hot... oh, That's interesting. So the way the Outlook handles Hotmail is different. 
It creates, yeah. it, I remember oh. that it does duplicate your Hotmail folder setup, and it puts it kind of in a separate folder area in the Outlook uh, b folder bar. Oh, so And so when you sync up, it doesn't see that. So you can't specify where you sync to the way you can on a CE device? You can sync any folder you want. You can't do that in Palm? I'm no, sure. it only, I think it only takes the inbox. That's a really interesting question. Well, you know, I can send mail for my Palm Pilot. Right. Right. But not vice versa. Now, let you, me you got, you, 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 let now, me. Jennifer gets mail from multiple boxes on her Palm, but it sounds like Hotmail... Well, hot mail so when you sync, do you get it only from the inbox, or do you get mail from other folders as well? Well, like if I put an email in my inbox and I sync, then it shows up on my Palm Pilot. Right. right. But I can't seem to sync anything through Hotmail directly. Let me, let me just, this is really interesting. Um, hmm. Let's launch Outlook Express. Is it possible, once you create the Hotmail folder structure, to move it up? As a subfolder of the inbox? Have you tried that? That's a I've tried. I don't think you can do it. I think the way it works is it... It's its own uh, folder structure. Yeah, it's, it's like a clone of the Hotmail on right, the right. server. Yeah, well, let's just real quickly show people, and maybe while we're doing it, I can uh, uh, I can set this up. I'll set up my Hotmail account on here. That's yeah. really interesting, because it, it should, in theory... Actually, I don't know if I have a Hotmail account I anymore. Do, do you? Yeah. You want to do it? Yeah. Why don't you set up your Hotmail account? And meanwhile, let's uh, tell folks that uh, while Outlook Express 5 does get Hotmail, our issue is how do we sync the Hotmail data? Apparently, those folders are somehow special. And ask them to either tell us in the message board, tell us in the chat room, or email us. That's an in Brandon, you've, you found a really interesting question. I haven't tried to do it. There must be a workaround, though. Yeah, I've been, I've been fussing with it for... For, day, for weeks now, and I haven't <laughs> been able to find out, find anything. You know, it's one of those things where you go, well, of course it can, and then you start looking at it, and you say, well, I don't know. So now what it's doing, by the way, is it's duplicating your folder structure, oh, your look, Hotmail, Hotmail folder Hotmail structure, over there. and it has its own inbox over here for Hotmail. Hmm. Now that's really interesting. And let's just try it. We can't just no, you yep, can't just drag, drag it up drag there. It, make it a subset. You can't set up a rules wizard. Can't we take? If you set up a message rule that said anything that comes in on the Hotmail account. I don't think you can do that with that, though. Where uh, the from, hmm. That's really an interesting. Let's see. Where the message is from a specified account. Now, let's see if we can specify Hotmail. Hotmail. We can't. Uh -huh. It only lets you specify your main account. I wonder if you could hack that and regedit it somewhere. I bet you could. All right. We're gonna, this is an assignment for the third geek because that's a, yeah. that is, that's a great one, Brandon. I wow. love that question. We, we thought, thought we were being so clever. Oh, no oh, sweat. There you go. We'll just show you how to do the Outlook thing, and it's a little... Oh, and right. thank you. These are all Microsoft products. Thank you, Microsoft, for making this so very easy. Oh, yeah. You and gotta love them. <laughs> <laughs> so intuitive. Not that we bash them. Unbelievable. Microsoft. I have a question. Do you still have any more of those cubes you were throwing out of Convex? I don't uh, think so. No. Well, we'll, Look, I'm looking around. You know, Brandon, hang on the line. We'll get your address. If we have any left, I believe we gave them all away at Convex. And I don't think they did another order. We chucked them at people's heads, Brandon. <laughs> They're great. Yeah, Those I rubber squeezy keys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. I'm sorry you didn't get one. We'll see if we can hang. Hang on the line, and we'll see if we can get after you're done with us. We're not done with you yet. Next time, Brandon, I'll remember to chuck a squeezy cube at your head, okay? Well, uh, okay. See, we're, remember, look memorize look what he looks like. Okay. You're, get, you're getting right. a cube next we're time. We're a big target on your head next time, Brandon. Okay, I'll put like a... <laughs> Big, huge, like five foot wide target on my head. Tattoo, cube me, Kate, on the cube me, Kate, on the forehead All right. there. Now, Brandon, I want you to try to do your best Leo Laporte impression, which should be fabulous. Right about now, it's, uh, I don't know. While you're taking uh, us to break, will you give it a shot? Sure. And if all else fails, be a cheesy announcer. All right. <laughs> Go for it. Thanks, Jason Leo. Look for the greatest DVD players on Fresh Gear when the screen savers continue. Oh, that was pretty good. Not, not cheesy enough, though. More cheese. Cheesy, More very cheesy. cheesy. That's that. Uh, <laughs> I'm There you go. Screensavers Online Super Geek Challenge to learn more about your favorite toy, the computer. Test your technology this week's quiz all about acronyms. Imho at the screensavers.com. FYI, PD. LOL. And congratulations to Bart from Chad, and I mean little old lady, from Chadbourne, North Carolina. Yay, Bart! Yes. Soon to be home of the new governor. What is it? Uh, what is it? There's another wrestler running for governor in North Carolina. There is. Inspired by Jesse the Body Jesse Ventura. Jesse the Body Ventura. It's like it's nature, the nature mind. boy. Nature. Oh, who, who's the wrestler? Nature me. man. Nature boy. Rick. Rick. Is that Rick? Rick Flair. Is Nature boy? He's running for governor. 
He, uh, by the way, he is not the winner of the SJ Super Tag Geek Team Politics Quiz T-shirt or cap giveaway. You could be a winner, though. No, Bart won. And you know Bart how to be that. a winner? You fill out the form, you know, after you've taken the quiz for your chance to win. And it's worth taking the whole quiz because Mike will score you, and he'll even send you to a fun link depending on your score. You get a cooler link the better you did. Paper, mister? <laughs> hey! Here's Jim Ladder back with a look at the new DVD players from the Consumer Electronics Show. High fashion on today's A Fresh Key. <laughs> DVD is quickly becoming the video format of choice for many consumers. And this year, the shape and style is not only changing, prices are dropping, and new capabilities are emerging. This year, portable is the way to go. Sony, Pioneer, and Toshiba all followed Panasonic's lead with their own portable DVD players. With crisp LCD screens, super thin, lightweight bodies, the race is on to make watching your favorite DVDs anywhere easier and cheaper. The prices for these sleek players range from about $700 all the way up to $1,500. One company has put a twist on their new player. GAT from Hong Kong not only has a portable video CD player with DVD capability on the way, but has added MP3 and karaoke to its palm pal. So not only can you watch your favorite movies on the go, but you can sing along too. The system will be available in March and will run about 800 bucks. If portable doesn't quite fit your budget, but you still want a compact solution, Konka has an answer. Their new TV-DVD combo comes in a variety of sizes. It's pretty stylish, and it's inexpensive, too. The 13-inch combo costs about 350 bucks, and it's available now. For the home theater fan, Sony is offering the DVD Dream System. This system incorporates a digital switching amplifier, a DVD and CD player, an AM-FM receiver, and six surround sound speakers. That's a lot of features and a pretty nice package. The DAV S300 will cost around $600, and it will be available this spring. Thompson RCA is looking a little bit further ahead. Their DVD concept line includes a DVD camcorder and a DVD projector that actually mounts on your wall. The smooth lines and colorful cases give us a glimpse of what's to come in the future of digital video. Straight out of the Jetsons. You can catch a new fresh gear every afternoon, 1.30, 12.30 Central, right here on ZDTV. So we got an email, came to us from Jeff in, uh, I guess you pronounce that, Buell, Idaho. He says, you talk about all kinds of scanning except for scanning film negatives. Can such a feat be accomplished? Well, Jeff, we didn't know, as usual. So we invited digital imaging specialist Rick Aldano to help us answer the question. Hi, Rick. Good to see you. Good to see you. You work for... Just uh, yourself, a freelancer. Oh, you're all right. Several magazines. You write for some digital photo magazines, there, right? Because yes, isn't that how we found your name? Right. Yeah. All right. Digital camera magazine. You want to give them a plug? Yeah. They might give you a little. Like the editor would like it. Yeah. Yeah. Digital, digital camera. camera. Magazine. Digital camera. Digital camera. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've seen uh, scanners that scan flatbed scanners that scan paper. That's easy. Right. Uh, I've heard of scanners that scan uh, slides. Right. Is scanning uh, a negative like this any different from scanning a slide? Not at all. Oh. It's, uh, oh, it's, hey, okay. it's working. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, it's a transparent image and that's what the film scanners do best. Okay. So they don't call them slide scanners anymore, they're just film scanners? Film scanners that really would be the correct term now. Really, a negative is no different than a slide, it's just negative color, right? Exactly. The opposite colors. And the film scanner would take the image reverse it so that you see a positive right. on screen. Right. Well, let's show us how this works now. Okay. I just, uh, I think it's minimized. Let me see if it's, uh, I think, yes, we still have Photoshop around. There we go. So we uh, would we use any program that understands scanners would be able to do this. Right. We're going to scan in any, from our... Yeah, any application that could take a Photoshop plug-in or a okay. Twain Acquire. Okay. And then you just... No, I, I accidentally stuck that in there. Is that all right? Yeah, it hits oh. coming back out. Oh, okay. So that's it. Just oh, oh, oh. it's a lot. It's automatic. <laughs> it's like it's sticking out its tongue. Now this is not a cheap one. This is the Nikon CoolScan LS2000. It's about how much? Uh, about fifteen hundred. Okay. On the street right now. Now I, I, I know people are freaking now. Is there anything cheaper than that? Sure. There are oh, three or four scanners I can think of uh, right now that would be well under a thousand dollars. Okay. I know HP makes one. HP, uh, Minolta. Minolta, their Scan Duel. Okay. Uh, which one, the Olympus. Those are around five, six hundred. Right. Which do you like of those? Um, I'd probably take a look at the Minolta Scan Duel okay. for around five hundred or a little less. Now that's considerably less than this, almost a thousand bucks less. Right. What am I giving up? Um, 
the tool set for the user. By the way, there it is, and it's reversed. So even though the, the, the negative was the other way around, this came out positive. So right. that's part of the, the, the deal with the software. Right, right. yeah, you can see up here the driver allows you to select either a positive okay. or a slide or a transparency. I'm sorry, I interrupted case. you. So the difference between the tool set is in the quality of the quality image. Quality of the image. Color, color color accuracy. Thing color like accuracy. No, if I'm an average guy. I mm -hmm. just want to take my negatives, print them out on my uh, my home PC, maybe using my Epson uh, stylus, color right. 750, something like that. Do I need to spend 1500 bucks? Uh, probably not. If okay. you're going to use, say, an, uh, an inkjet printer at home, right. or if you're going to have a personal website, right. uh, you can use a film scanner. These will be... These would be okay. These, These would be ones? fine, yeah. Okay. The, uh, even use your flatbed scanner if you can get a transparency unit now, for Now, it. tell me about that. Yeah, they have adapters for these flatbeds. Correct. And what, it just replaces the lid? Take off the lid. Okay. And you put on uh, another light source, okay. basically. And it allows you to have the light coming from above shining through as this does. So it uses the same pickup. It's Correct. just not, so normally a scanner bounces light off the image and then takes a picture in the same head. Right. This instead of doing that bounces as this does passes light through the passes image. Passes light through so it uh, hits the uh, CCD that down makes below. That sense. You have like a slideshow. You exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So how much are those adapters then? Uh, it depends on the scanner, but yeah. for most uh, consumer scanners, probably in the neighborhood of. 150 to 300 dollars. Oh, okay. So the first thing you should look at if you want to do this then would be to get the the, the replacement lid for your scanner. Right. Get an adapter, a couple hundred bucks. Next thing would be look at the Minolta, yep. and then if you really are a professional, you're going to do pre-press. You really need high quality images. This is this is a good scanner. All right. Yeah. You, you like the quality on this? Yes, I do. All right. I, I've been using one for. Uh, some time now. Hey, we should thank, by the way, that this is uh, this is not ours. We weren't able to get one from Nikon. We should thank the uh, is Keeble and Suchet. Is that how you say? Keeble and Shuckett. Keeble and Shuckett. All right. Keeble and Shuckett uh, Photography in Palo Alto, California. They lent us this scanner, so we really appreciate. It. That's a good uh, camera store. Yes. All right. Yeah. Full service for uh, digital imaging. Keeble and Shuckett. I'll remember that. And uh, thank you, Keeble and Shuckett, for letting us do that. Um, show us some of the things you can do with it. Sure. Uh, for example, if you wanted to, you can well, make some what, adjustments. This, is, this graph is what? This is uh, their curves tool, uh -huh. and you can make adjustments. These are what, all the colors on this uh, that are in the picture? Well, here I'll show you. Look at, you keep an eye on what's happening on screen. Okay, we'll watch the picture. And as you drag these, uh, yeah, well, if, you, if you can drag these in. There, there we, go. we go. Oh, that's interesting. So you're oh, you adjusting. Okay. Adjusting the capability of the scanner to meet I the uh, quality of the image. I see. And actually, that's, that really is quite good image. That's, that does a made, nice job. Made a big improvement. So if all you have is the negatives, you could go to the Photoshop and have them make prints for you, or it, and then scan them in. Exactly. Or you could get a film scanner and scan them in and have them. And is it, it's probably better to do that. First generation, you don't lose a generation. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The, uh, every generation you go past the original image, Right. You'll lose some of the quality. Excellent. This is a great thing to know about it. But uh, we had somebody who emailed us that she wanted to take all of her mom's old slides that were deteriorating in the closet. Oh yes. And put them on a CD. This would be a great project. That like that'd be a good yeah. good thing for them to do. All right. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you want to learn more about film scanning, check out the article Rick wrote for us. It's at thescreensavers.com. And Rick, I really thank you for coming. My pleasure. It's really great Thanks to meet for you. having me. We'll have you back. We'll talk some more about cool. digital photography because this Good. is about the hottest thing out there right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm really glad to see these. these. This is nice to be able to do this. Yeah. Thanks, Very Rick. Cool things. After the break, more help with your computing problems when the screensavers continues. I was thinking um, uh, on that, uh, syncing the pilot with Hotmail, mm -hmm. maybe, and I could try this uh, tonight, using other synchronization software, something like desktop to go oh. third-party software instead of the, the pilot conduits, maybe you can do it that way. I'm no guarantee. But I have desktop to go at home. I'll give that a try. Maybe okay. we can get that to work. I've been futzing with the synchronized settings under Hotmail. I that's frustrating. Oh, I still can't get You it should be it. able to do it, and there's no reason why not. Well, and so that's why he called us. Makes, He's like, makes me mad Hello. Microsoft made that so hard. So we're working on it. All right. Okay. Maybe it's Palm's fault. Maybe it's just Palm's fault. Does it have to be Microsoft's fault? Yes. 
Can right? it be Palm's fault for not seeing anything below the inbox? That's going to have to be Microsoft's fault, huh? Yeah, because it's the way Hotmail expose. I mean, uh, Outlook exposes the data to the conduit. Okay, I was just, you know. It's Microsoft's fault. Rodney joins us on the phone from. I like Microsoft. We just were saying how great Windows 2000 was. Hey, Ro I'm sorry, Rodney. What's up? <laughs> hey. Hi, Rodney. Spring, Texas. Poor Rodney. What's up, Rodney? Hi. Hi. Um, okay, me, me and my brother, we have a network. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, uh, he has a 14 4 modem, so it's like really slow. That's Okay. Nice. Yeah, and I was wondering if he can use my modem sure. for my computer. Sure. What's your modem? Um, 56K. And you yeah. want to share it out? Yes. Yeah, so, called, that's modem sharing. Yeah. So you should totally be able to do that. What operating system are you running? Um, Windows 98. SE? Oh, that's even better. SE? Yeah, second edition. Oh, well, see, that's, I mean. You're done. That's really well, over. I don't want to be on the net. I want him to be able to dial for my modem. Yeah, ICS works that that's way. That's in the configuration. I mean, it's really a, a couple of buttons in the setup. You just set up your modem to share your Internet connection. Of course, part of your, your deal is it's not a cable modem where DSL is live all the time. It has to dial out, but it is in the settings. It will, set, it will dial out. Uh, Internet connection sharing, you're going to be the server, right? Yes. His machine's going to be the client. Uh, you, it'll make a little disk, floppy disk. You go, you waddle over. He doesn't even have to be using SE. He can use Windows 98 or 95. Yeah. You'll waddle over to his machine. He'll set it up, and it will automatically dial your modem when he tries to get online. But of course, his machine will have to be on. But yeah, yeah, you have to leave everything on. Yeah, okay. If okay. that doesn't work, and it does, it should. It, it'll work. Uh, our friend Analog X also has a proxy server. Does exactly the same thing. It's mm -hmm. free from AnalogX.com. Same thing. You'll put that program on your computer as the host, so it uses your modem. And when he dials out, in effect, it asks your or your computer to dial. The software's running on your computer. It, it's pretty straightforward, it's but ICS, really you, you got SE, ICS should do it. That's what it's made. The whole point of getting 98 SE is to share your yeah, it's the only, connection. really, the only it's thing actually, that's unique to SE. Yeah. Okay? Okay, well, can I have an autograph photo? You say you can. Hang on the line. We'll be glad to get that for you. Okay. I'll have my people get your people, He'll, and we'll uh, work it all out. What is model over? To I, get an autograph picture, we're just assuming that he waddles. No, I will waddle over. Oh, you'll waddle over. But you could sprint, yeah. canter, no, I'm a waddle. caper, stroll, <laughs> meander. <laughs> meander. That's more my speed. See, this is a creative show. We have a thesaurus. We do. We may not be able to say it, but we and have it. But we have it, and we want you to show your creativity. Show us your support. Show your love. Share your love. <laughs> show us your email. Record and send us a video email. Instructions. Oh, that was a long way around. Did you like oh, it? Oh, what a segue. Big, big. Oh, oh, my goodness. Creatavers.com. <laughs> interact. Script. Wondering where you're going. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> We're going to share our love and some final email, some closing thoughts and parting shots. Oh, no. When the screen oh, saver cool. continues. It's about sharing the love. Thank you. I'm not going to punch you. Share the love. love. Share the love. I feel the love. You feel the love. I feel the love. We're feeling the love. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to Screen Savers. Take a peek up there on your screen, and you'll see that so far, an overwhelming 75% of you Three to one margin. A virtual anchor, of course, only Literally. voted, but you've got 24 hours to go in there and try and make that a double digit well, or something. I have to say, I'm, I'm relieved nobody was watching this show because this was not my finest hour. By the way, somebody, about, well, well, we weren't able to answer one darn question. Well, well maybe we have one and a half. We tried to help, and Jamie's all excited about being on. And so he was happy. He didn't care. We didn't help him. But somebody in the chat room help. said Chapura, which also makes synchronization software for uh, uh, the Palm. In mm -hmm. fact, it comes with the new Palm 7. Oh, cool. Um, they said it does work with Outlook, so, uh, uh, Hotmail. So I'll try it. I have that at home also. I'll try some third-party solutions and see if those conduits work to get Hotmail from Outlook Express into your palm. Okay, we're working on that. All right. And we'll follow up with that. Let's read some emails. This is a sad email from Teresa in Clear Lake, California. Um, it's a long story, but I'll give you the short version. Basically, quite a few people who ordered Christmas trees online from hardware.com. Remember when we had them on? Yeah. If you live in California, you know what it's like to live in California. They have agricultural laws, and sometimes they don't let you ship things into this state. You couldn't so bring the plants? They said that the balsam trees were infected with some kind of pest that is not native to California, and they sent these people's Christmas tree back, and they had no Christmas tree. But Look at this. But it's a notice of rejection. Notice of rejection from the agricultural department. Now, she did say that Hardware.com was wonderful and helpful and called like a 100 nurseries trying to find her a Christmas tree, so it wasn't Aww. their fault. But we're so sorry to those of you who 
that get a terrible? train. Don't blame Hardware.com. They didn't know. It's not their fault either. But wow. Wow. Violation. Violation. Wow. wow. We're sorry. Hey, that's it for this edition of the Screensavers. We thank you for the uh, calls. We will get many of your answers in the show notes. Whoa. If I have to stay till midnight tonight writing them, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to that at thescreensavers.com. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Kate Patello. Thank you. We'll see you next time on, uh, what's the show called? The Screensavers. Right, Screensavers. I'm totally demoralized. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs>